Thank you, and I want to thank the conference organizers for putting together such an important panel of people throughout these three days. And uh, I want to uh, thank them for inviting me. And I'd like to uh, also say that I want to dedicate uh, this paper and the longer version that follows to the spirit of Terrence McKenna. Uh, he really came up with these ideas 20 years ago before we had good scientific evidence to back them up. And uh, my short paper today and the longer one really is to uh, support what he contended about the role of psychedelics in human evolution. So this paper is going to address what has been called the drug paradox. Why is it that humans are attracted to what are generally considered to be toxins? And understand how it is that we evolved to benefit from their use. In essence, these exogenous sources of endogenous neurotransmitters played a significant role in human evolution, led to the emergence of shamanism and ultimately to modern human consciousness. So in this short paper, I'm going to review the evidence related to the serotonergic and opioid systems, and in the longer version that follows, I will look at how these substances relate to the environment of evolutionary adaptation, the presence of psilocybin mushrooms, uh, how these substances produced a neurotheology that led to the development of shamanism, and how shamanism and consciousness-altering substances played a central role in the evolution of human consciousness. So why is it that we humans seek to use these exogenous sources of serotonin-like substances and opioid analogs? But the dominant approach in neurobiology has looked at these drugs as part of the reward and reinforcement systems and the effects they have on the mesolimbic dopamine systems where the limbic brain concentrates dopaminergic neurons. Virtually all classes of drugs, including alcohol, nicotine, stimulants, and THC, have effects both on the opiate systems, on dopamine transmission, as well as on serotonin. Now, these effects on the dopamine system are generally characterized as producing unconditioned, pleasurable responses, such as those associated with food and sex. Sullivan, Hagen, and Hammerstein point to a paradox in this concept of drugs as sources of hedonistic rewards because these substances have their role in ecological relations as toxins, which are designed to basically poison animals that eat them. So the presence of these plant substances in the environment are normally interpreted in terms of something that deters animals from consuming them. So why is it that substances that are viewed as producing rewards are based upon substances that are considered toxins and designed to deter animals from eating them? Since we do not evolve genetic capacities, our neural circuitry, to reward us for non-adaptive and fitness-reducing behaviors, rewarding us for the consumption of toxins, we must conclude that humans evolved in order to make use of these exogenous substances. Several aspects of drug effects suggest that we evolved the capacity to benefit from these substances. In general, their effects upon the mesolimbic dopamine system are interpreted as involving the reinforcement of behaviors that favor successful adaptation. So the abilities of humans to consume and benefit from what are considered plant toxins suggests that humans evolve an ability to utilize these substances through evolving mechanisms that overcome plant deterrence in the neurotoxins and instead allow us to derive benefits from consuming them. Sullivan and Hagen review evidence of a long-term evolutionary relationship between psychotropic plant substances and humans' cognitive abilities. I'm sort of falling behind here. Uh, so what they suggest is that we, in essence, uh, have benefits from the ability to use these neurotransmitter analogs as substitutes for endogenous transmitters that are rare or otherwise limited by dietary constraints. These are primarily monoamine neurotransmitters such as serotonin, which are crucial for brain function and require dietary precursors. So these neurotransmitters, including norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, are central to managing stress and making the cultural practices that encourage the consumption of these exogenous substances an important part of a metabolic adaptation that benefited human adaptation and survival. So, 
There are important human chimpanzee differences in the self-administration of drugs. Uh, while laboratory animals will generally self-administer, if given the opportunity, alcohol, heroin, cocaine, caffeine, nicotine, and other addictive substances, they will not continue to self-administer the psychedelics. And this is specifically true for our closest animal relatives, our cousins, the chimpanzees. Now, while the neurotransmitter systems are very conservative with substantial similarities across mammalian species, not only in terms of serotonin, but also in terms of other neurotransmitter systems, um, there, in the case of humans, there have been specific genes that have involved the control of protein sequences that have evolved in humans rather than in chimpanzees. So studies on the human chimpanzee genome uh, have suggested that there are significant differences which indicate rapid evolutionary divergence in the human line in terms of what are called xenobiotic metabolizing genes that allow us to metabolize toxins. And some of the most significant differences between humans and chimpanzees are in terms of what's called segmental duplication of genes, the repetition of genes in specific areas of the genome. And these gene duplications produce changes in the onset and the extent of gene expression, providing mechanisms for the diversification of genes, which can occur during the duplication, and provide a basis for novel gene functions. The human CYP2D6 gene illustrates the adaptive functions that come from segmental duplication. It's involved in encoding an enzyme, cytochrome P450, that's involved in the metabolism of drugs. And these human capabilities reflect adaptations to frequently encountered plant toxins in the environment and in our diet. 